Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here from Ad Math Engineer, and this is a video on superposition. So this is quite a tricky problem. Um, you know, it's, uh, if you can do this one, you can probably do anything that your professor is going to give you in an exam. The tricky part about this one, uh, if you just take a look at the question, you'll know right away that we have this distributed load, but it's not across the whole beam. It's just on the end between B and C. We have a concentrated moment here. Okay, that's going to cause a deflection here, but it's not actually at the end of the cantilever, so we don't have a case for that. So those are the two tricks here. Also, the question is in terms of W and L. We're going to solve it in terms of W and L, but you can go ahead and plug the numbers in if you want. Professors kind of like to trick people sometimes and just tell them to solve using the letters, so it's good to know exactly what's going on there. Okay, so we're asked to determine the deflection at the free end of the cantilever, so uh, deflection at point C. So take a look at the screen now. Uh, I have the table up on there. You can pause and you can move it uh, to the other screen if you want or just keep it up there just while we solve it. So anyway, we're going to use case two to start. The formula for case two is V max at the end here at point C, okay, is going to be negative because we have, uh, our deflection is down. So we're going to consider down as negative. So it's WL4 over 8EI. Now you may be thinking, well, Fred, I have this section here that we don't have on our beam, right? That distributed load. And you're right. What we're going to need to do in the next step is subtract the, the effect on the deflection of this loading that doesn't exist on ours okay and we're going to do it by applying an upward uniformly distributed load and we're going to add it to this because it's going to be positive so but first let's find the deflection at c so i always like to draw the elastic curve here okay so we have a deflection delta c okay and delta c is simply going to be let's go ahead and plug in our values sorry this is 2l not l okay we have l and l this is 2l so let's go ahead and plug in our w our w is 2w our L is 2L, and we have 8EI, okay? Very good. So now we found the deflection due to the entire uh, distributed load on the beam. Now we need to subtract this part. So I'm going to draw this one a little bit bigger, okay? So now we have, a, we're still working with case two. Now, as you can see, this blue section here, we've gone ahead and we've uh, applied it upwards on the beam. Okay, and what we can do from that, just straight from case two, is we can get the deflection at B. It won't be the deflection at C. I'll show you how to get that in a sec. So the shape of our elastic curve is going to be upwards now. Okay, and we have a deflection delta B. And this whole deflection here, okay, is delta C. And that's what we want, okay, because we want to subtract the effect of this loading on C, not at B. But we don't have a case for that. So first of all, let's find the deflection at B, and then we're going to need to find this deflection here, okay, that we, uh, I'll just call that delta for now. So let's go ahead and uh, find the deflection at B. So it's the same formula, but it's just upwards. So we're going to say VB is simply W plus, no negative now, okay. And let's, uh, let's just fill it in straight. So we have 2W, okay, uh, our L is just L. Okay, and we have 2WL to the fourth over 8EI. So, how do we find this? Well, um, there's no formula for this, as you can see in the table. So what we need to do is we need to multiply the angle of rotation at B. So we have this angle of rotation, okay, theta B. And we're going to multiply that by the length here, L. Okay, and the reason why we can do that is due to the small angle theorem. We did a video on this before. When the angle is really small, we can say that tan theta is equal to theta, roughly, because the angle is very, very small. They're about the same. Okay, so what we can do is we can say uh, tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, where opposite is deflection. Okay, so then we can say L times tan theta is equal to deflection. And since tan theta is theta, L times theta is equal to deflection. So if you're unsure about that, check the video down below in the link in the description. It'll tell you a little bit more about that. So how do we find this delta here? So this delta, okay, is going to be the angle of rotation at B. Okay, so let's take a look at what the formula is for the angle of rotation at B. And, and it's going to be, and remember this is a positive angle because it's counterclockwise. So we have W L cubed over six EI, okay? Let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. So we have two W L cubed over six EI. Now, all we need to do in order to get this deflection here is multiply this theta by L, and then we're done. So the deflection, total deflection delta C is simply going to be this plus this term, this term here is just going to be times L, okay? 
Okay, and when we go ahead and we add these two together, we're going to get this loading case here, this deflection according to this uh, loading case for the uniformly distributed load. Perfect. Okay, so half the question's done. Now we do need to figure out our next part, which is the the uh, concentrated moment at B. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so we have our concentrated moment here, and as we can see, it's going to cause the beam to deflect upwards again. Okay, so we have delta C. This is B, C, A. Okay, and the magnitude of our moment is simply W, L squared. Okay, perfect. So how do we go ahead and how do we figure out this to delta C? Well, it's actually exactly the same thing that we did here with the angle. Okay, so what we did here with the theta, we're going to need to do that again. Okay, so if we go, uh, I'm going to put the table back up on the screen now. If you take a look at case four, you'll see a case where we have a concentrated moment at the end of a cantilever. And we don't have that in this case. Um, so what we're going to need to do is we're just going to need to consider AB. We're going to need to find the deflection at the end of that AB cantilever portion. And then we're going to need to find this delta again, this little top portion here. So um, it's, and it's actually exactly the same thing. So let's take a look at case four and we'll find our... Let's find our VB for case four. Okay, it's simply going to be, and the moment is counterclockwise, so we're gonna count, consider this positive here. We have ML squared over two EI. Okay, let's plug in our M. Our M is WL squared. Our L in this case is just L because we were finding it at B. And we have two EI on the denominator. Perfect. Okay, so that's our delta B. Now, uh, we need to find, and that is this deflection here. We need to find this one up here. So this one up here is going to be the angle of rotation due to this rot this moment here times L. Okay, simple. Let's go ahead and find our theta B then. So our theta B, uh, according to case four, is ML over EI. Okay, let's plug in. We have WL squared, our moment, and L is simply L here over EI. Okay, and if that's, so that is this angle of rotation here, theta b. So th as we talked about before, theta b times l will give us this small portion up here. And we can add those two together. So as, uh, delta c for this case here is simply going to be this term here. So we have wl squared times l squared over 2ei. Okay, and we're going to add this, def this piece here which is simply WL squared times L over EI times L. And that's our three terms that we need. Perfect. So how do we finish this? How do we find the deflection at point C? So we need to add all of these terms together. So if you remember correctly, we had this term. Okay, so this term was due to this entire loading. We needed to add this one to it in order to get the actual uh, deflection at C due to the distributed load and the actual problem. And then we needed to add this term in order to find the deflection. So let's go ahead and add them all together. Okay, so our delta C is simply going to be negative 2W times 2L to the fourth over 8EI. Okay, so that is due to the entire loading. Plus, we're going to add this term here. Okay, we have 2WL to the fourth over 8EI plus 2WL cubed over 6EI. This is the angle of rotation at B due to this one here times the length. And that's going to give us the deflection at C of, of this case here. And finally, we're going to add our delta C due to the moment. And for that, we have WL squared times L squared over 2EI plus WL squared times L over EI. This is uh, theta B for this case here times the distance L. So a little bit messy. Um, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can simplify this, and we should get that delta C is simply negative 23 WL to the fourth over 12 EI. I suggest you guys try that. For the sake of keeping this video kind of short, shorter, I'm gonna go ahead and not include that. But you know, I, I would suggest that you give that a try. So that's the final answer, okay? And if we go ahead and plug in our values now, okay, so we have 23 times 7,000. So it's seven, 7 kilonewton per meter, so that's newtons. We have 1.8 meters to the fourth. 
Now let's divide by 12. Let's plug in our values for E. E is 200 GPA, so we're going to multiply that to get it to PA times 10 to the 9. And we have our I. Our I is in meters to the fourth, so we can just keep it the same units. And if we go ahead and calculate that out, we're going to get a deflection of 5.42 millimeters. So it's negative. It means that it's downwards. So like I said, quite a tricky problem, actually. Um, that is, if you can do that, you know what, you should be good in this course. You should be good to go in this section because uh, that's about as tricky as it gets. I hope you could follow that. I know um, I, I try and stay away from problems like this because they can get messy. But I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something from it. Now at least you have the solution so you can try it on your own. Give it a try. Uh, post down below in the comments if you enjoyed this video, if you like this problem, and if you want to see more. Uh, I'm Fred from Math Math and Engineering, and thanks for watching, guys. Take care.